Okay, so this is going to be the first in a series of tutorials that shows some basic functionality of Blender. Blender is a free-to-use 3D modeler that makes models that are compatible with Unity. We're not going to look at doing anything complicated like make characters or anything like that. We're going to look at just primitives to begin with. And part of the reason for that is we learn through repetition. So since there are numerous primitives that Unity should have but do not have, I figure this would be a good way to both close the gap as far as what models are available to you in Unity and um, as well as teach you three or four basic tools within Blender. Now in Unity, if you go up to Game Object and you do 3D Object, this is what I was talking about. There's Cube, the Sphere, this Capsule, and the Cylinder. You've got Plane, Quad, but there's plenty of others that could be here, like Ring, or a Hollow Cylinder, or a Frame. So there's easily five or six. I only mentioned a couple, but there's easily five or six or maybe even a dozen very common primitives that Unity should have. Now, just to be clear, they're not going to be up here in the menu. What's going to happen is we're going to create them and then we're going to put them in the asset area. So it's not like it's modifying the user interface. It's just going to be uh, models that you could import into your project. All right, so let's, look, let's get started. This is what Blender looks like when you first start it. For whatever reason, contrary to every other application on the planet, right click is used to select an object so if you don't want to do that go up to file go down to user preferences click on input and change this from right to left and then save the settings now even though we are going to use a block i'm going to delete the one that's here because again we learned through repetition so if you hit the delete key it says delete okay you click on delete and I'm sorry that everything is so small. That is simply the way that uh, Blender is set up. Okay, so come down here to Add. And you're going to choose Mesh. And then you're going to choose Cube. So this is what we were just looking at. Blender has numerous modes. One of them is the Object Mode, which is what we're in right now. If you look down here, it says Object Mode. That is when you rearrange the objects within the scene. What we want at the moment is edit mode. So if you click here and choose edit mode, what you're doing now is you're not moving the object around the scene so much you're modifying the object itself. You can scale it, uh, you can deform it, you can do lots of things to it. If you notice, the whole thing is amber because the entire thing is selected. So if you click the A key on the keyboard, Again, that's the A key on the keyboard. It will deselect. So click on that a couple times. Select all, deselect. Select all, deselect. Pretty straightforward. So A for all. What we want to do is we want to highlight just the top of this. So first, let's get a little bit closer. So just like Unity, the scroll wheel, just scroll the scroll wheel forward and you'll zoom in. Click the B, that's the B button on the keyboard, and you'll see this crosshair appear. This allows you to select multiple ones. This is kind of like a lasso mode or a box select. So again, letter B, box select. So left click, hold, drag, and let go. Now see how only the top is amber? So only the top vertices, the top edges, and the top facing are selected. And the reason why I say it that way is because Blender differentiates between the points, the edge, and the facing. So now if we click on the delete key, the menu is different. Rather than just saying delete, it says, okay, well, what do you want to delete? Well, we want to delete facings. See, now it's like a box. So this alone, you could actually say if you wanted it to, because you, now you've got a box that you could put things in. But we're going to do something else with it, though. So if you press down on the scroll wheel and then you move the mouse, you'll see that you can rotate. So you're moving the camera, not the object itself. Again, click B for box mode, left click, drag, and let go. Again, click the delete key, faces, 
and now you've deleted the bottom. Again, press down on the uh, middle mouse button, the roll, the roll, the scroll button, and then move the mouse. And now you can see that you have indeed created this kind of hollow uh, uh, box. Now, the problem is these are very, very thin. They really don't have any thickness at all. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some changes. So first, we're going to scale this. So again, click down on the scroll wheel, rotate so you can get a better vantage point. And now what we're going to do this time, again, click B. Select, well, actually, rather than doing that, hit A. And then hit A one more time. Let's just do it the right way. We'll select the whole thing pressing A. Now, we want to scale. So just like A for all, the key for scale, the, the button on the keyboard is S, S for scale. So you press S. Now we have to take a moment to explain a difference between the 3D environment in Blender and Unity. And that is that Unity has up and down as the y-axis. For whatever reason, Blender has up and down as the z-axis. It won't be a problem when you export your objects, but the reason why I take a moment to explain this is because the key press I'm about to tell you wouldn't make sense if I didn't tell you that. So after you press S for scale, you can then say, okay, I want to lock which axis I'm going to change. Well, we want to lock the vertical axis. That that's the only axis we want to move on. Well, Unity, you would think, okay, it's the y-axis. It's the z-axis in Blender. So you'd click Z on the keyboard, and now you see this vertical line appear. And now you can just move the mouse until it shrinks. And then you click on Enter to save your change. Or rather, exit the t that uh, particular function. Now click on the mouse again. The set, the um, Click on the scroll wheel. Hold it. Rotate so we can get a better vantage point. And now it looks more like a frame. This is where we now add a new function that we haven't done up to this point. We've basically just selected using select all, selected using box select, and now we scaled using S. Well, now what we need to do is give this thickness. So you have a bunch of really tiny icons up here. One of them looks like a wrench, and when you point at it, it says modifiers. So you click on that. Add modifier. We're going to choose solidify. Now, just like Unity, where you can uh, click on a value and then scroll left and right, left click and hold on thickness and then move to the right. And you can see it now has thickness. We're going to scroll in with the scroll wheel, and now you've created a frame. So, just like that, you've created yourself a very useful primitive that for some reason again unity just doesn't have by default so we're going to go to file we're going to go to well let's save this so if you do save as and i already have one here called frame because i was uh, practicing so we'll just click on frame save as blender and that overrode it so now go to file Go to export, go to FBX. That is the format for Unity. So FBX. And as you can see, there's already a frame one here because like I said, I was practicing. So I'm going to click on that, export FBX. So now we have a frame. We could go to Unity and import it, but let's do that all at once. Again, I want you to be able to repeat these steps multiple times so it becomes like muscle memory. So we'll go to file, do new. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, so again, you see the block. This time, we don't want it. So delete, delete, add mesh, and this time we're going to go to cylinder. Now, cylinder is actually going to be easy. So I'm not sure if you'd consider this an inconsistency, but for some reason with cylinder, over here, you have a menu, and it says cap fill. So maybe because it's rounded on the sides and flat at the top, whereas a cube is flat on all sides, that it asks you, do you want this to be filled? So you don't have that with the cube, but you do have it with the cylinder. 
Well, that means we don't need if, – if we don't have it filled, then we don't need to delete it. So click on fill type and choose nothing. Left uh, – not left click, sorry. Uh, press down on the scroll wheel, rotate, and you already have a hollow cylinder just like that. So now you could save this. You could save this as a pipe, except there's an issue. Again, it's it's technically has almost no width. That was just me scrolling the scroll wheel again. So let's go back to add modifier. So the wrench, click on add modifier, same as last time, solidify. Click and hold on thickness. And there you go. Now you have a pipe. I'm going to press down again on the scroll wheel just to rotate around. Now the sides don't look so great. There is something that can be done, but I don't want to give you too much at once so we can revisit that in another tutorial. But there is a way to smooth out the sides. It just creates an issue with the edges. So for now, we'll save this as a pipe. So file, save as. As you can see, there's already a pipe there. File, export, FBX, and again, pipe. So just like that, you've created two very useful primitives. Let's create another. So file, new, reload, delete, and we're going to use the same one. Add, mesh, cylinder. Come over here to cap fill type, nothing. And now this time we're going to scale it just like we did with the frame. So click S, click Z, scale in. Probably should have zoomed. Zoom in now with the scroll wheel. And once again, we're going to use that same feature. We're going to click on the wrench, add modifier solidify again part of the reason why i chose these primitives is because you're using almost exactly the same tool set that repetition will help you learn left click hold slide over and now it kind of looks like a ring but like i said you got these flat edges so unlike the pipe we're going to smooth this out so we're going to go to add modifier again and this time subdivision surface and even doing that with these minimal settings down here, you can already see it looks smoother. So let's scroll in a little bit with the scroll wheel. Now there's two types, there's view and there's render. View is just what you see. That way you can test to see what it looks like. Render is how it actually goes out. So if we click on this and we change it to two, that's how it's gonna look. There we go. So the only time that you'd really want these different is once you've gotten the view to be what you want it to be, you can set the render to the same amount, then you can drop the view back down to one, because depending on your system and depending how many models you have on the screen at once, it could make processing a lot slower. So what really matters is the render. So let's see what looks good. So left click, slide over. Now that looks nice and smooth, so we'll change render to that amount as well. And there we go. Now you have a ring, just like that. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna uh, press down on the scroll wheel and then move the mouse, so you can kind of get a bigger, better vantage. And indeed, you've got yourself a ring. Within um, Unity, you can make it bigger. So say you want a hoop, maybe it's a series of rings you have to fly through or swim through, or maybe you want to scale it smaller to make it say like a ring that a character has to pick up, such as a blue hedgehog that runs around picking up rings. So file, save as, and again, the reason why it's here is because I was testing before. So save, file, export, FBX. All right, so let's see what we've got now. So let's go to Unity, and then we're going to go to our folder. So there's our 3D folder. 
these are the blender files, so the orange ones, whereas these, the FBX ones, are the actual objects we want to import. So you could just drag and drop ring. Pipe, frame, okay, I think that was it. I think we only did those three. And as you can see, there's a similar theme. They're all hollow. So this is a border, this is a border, this is a border. And now it's just a matter of dragging and dropping into your scene. They can be rotated. It can be scaled. Just like any other object. So that's the frame. The pipe. Like I said, this one we'll look at smoothing out in another video. Because you can see how it's kind of blocky. But again, this isn't about using final graphics. This is about the placeholder graphics that you'd use for your proof of concept, for your testing. You really don't want to have to reach out to a development community until you know for certain that you could proceed with your project. And so this empowers you to make more uh, primitives other than just what Unity comes with. So we can delete that. There's the ring, and again, like I said, these can be scaled. You can also make them smaller. Suitable for a hedgehog's pocket. They can be rotated. Okay, so I think that's about it. I hope it wasn't too much. Like I said, Blender is very complex. There's a lot of functionality. This was really just to focus on three or four functions and then just rinse and repeat. Get used to using that same function over and over again so you just get comfortable with it. So if you guys like this video and want more, just let me know.